Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome Dr. Stephen Castle. Dr. Castle is a mobility and balance expert and is passionate about supporting older adults with being physically active and being able to do what matters most in their lives. Dr. Castle is board certified in internal medicine and geriatric medicine. He is a professor of geriatric medicine at UCLA. Uh, he's also the director of geriatrics clinical innovation with the Veterans Administration Los Angeles Healthcare System. And he is chief medical officer of Altura's Upright program. So we are in for a lot of fantastic and very helpful information and tips today. Let's move into the first question. So Dr. Castle, what are some of the benefits of maintaining physical activity as we age? Well, you know, as we get older, it's a coin flip that we either engage in physical activity or we choose sedentary behavior. And the benefits of physical activity and the harm of sedentary behavior are extensive. So choosing physical activity over sedentary behavior, you have a decline in mortality, a decline in disease progression, and it actually slows the key influencers of the aging process inflammation, mitochondrial function, and oxidative damage. A recent review of the benefits of exercise across a wide range of diseases and disabilities showed a clear benefit and had no age limit. So the benefits reduce the aging process. And then can you share with us uh, which common medical conditions can be minimized or even avoided by maintaining or increasing physical activity? Yeah, so there's a, a lot of decline in chronic conditions, including diabetes and heart disease, but it's the single best thing we can do to prevent us from getting dementia, or if we have it, to slow the progression of it. And so why is that? So as we evolved from quadrupeds and became bipeds, our brains markedly developed. But over the centuries, we were hunter-gatherers, and we walked and had to remember how to get back, and that kept our brains healthy. Over the last century, we became more sedentary, and we opened up our brains to demanding illnesses, um, and, and that this can be restored um, by doing exercise. And muscle strengthening releases microRNAs that patches the holes in the blood-brain barrier, so it, it actually shows significant improvement. Fantastic and also very hopeful. Um, and also balance tends to be an issue for older adults. Uh, is this something that can be improved or at least maintained? Yeah, so many older adults don't even discuss a fall event with their healthcare provider. And when they're approached to improve their balance, they say that's for someone old, not me. So they have this ageist bias to it. And then the healthcare providers, they don't really know what to do. So they say, be careful, don't fall. So I think what you have to do is think about your own mobility and balance and how it's evolved since you were in your 40s. I'm 67 now. And so, you know, you might have to push to get up with your arms. You're a little unsteady on curbs or stairs um, and, and you're walking slower. Uh, so now you've got to really work on your leg strength and doing specific balance maneuvers where you can stand with your feet side by side, semi-tandem, full tandem. I like to do this when I'm looking in the mirror. And if you lose your balance, you can put your hands on the counter and really work to improve your balance. So yes, we, we can significantly improve our mobility and balance through exercise. But it, it's got to be not just aerobic, weight resistance training, so this is building the muscles that helps plug the brain and then the balance training. So you just can't walk around your neighborhood. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, and finally, what are three suggestions you have for our audience today? So you've got to choose physical activity. And so part of this is to put it into your daily routine. So there are morning people and there's evening people. So you kind of exercise when it fits you. And if, if you're not doing it, figure out what the obstacles are and then how to get around the obstacles. And uh, family and friends exercising together really kind of mutual benefit. So that's that's my tip. Um, the second tip I already mentioned was, was the importance of adding the weight resistance training uh, because that helps restore the blood-brain barrier. 
And then my last tip is don't walk around the house barefoot or socks. The research shows that that's the single biggest risk for falls, a 14-fold increased risk if you walk around barefoot in socks. So that it's biomechanical and it helps with position sense. Um, and uh, Skechers has these new slip-in shoes that you can keep at your bedside or next to the couch and just slip right into them so you're not walking around barefoot. And this is particularly true in diabetes and peripheral neuropathy where you're your balance is markedly improved by wearing shoes. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Castle. These are actionable, helpful, and thoughtful tips uh, for our viewing audience. So for even more information, you can refer to your provider's website or contact the Upright team at upright at altura.health. Thanks so much.